Welcome to the Table of Los Fresnos. My name is Chad Bresson. I am the lead pastor at the Table of Los Fresnos. So thankful that you are with us this morning. You could be spending your time someplace else, but instead, you're here. So I thank you. This is our online worship service. We do this every week at 1030 right here on Facebook, or if you happen to be watching on YouTube, we're here on YouTube as well. But we are here every week at 1030 and we gather around God's Word. And when we gather, we gather as one. You see, it's the Word that unites us. So as we gather around the Word, you'll hear us talk as if we are together, even though we are different, distant and in different places. You may be watching on your phone, you may be watching on your tablet or your laptop or even your television. But as you watch with others who are also watching right now, we gather as one because it is the Word and Christ who unites us through His Word together. So we gather together this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of the table this week. Now there are certain things that we want you to be aware of. If this is your first time, let us know that you're here. Uh, make a comment or, or again make a comment here on Facebook or make a comment here on YouTube Let us know that you're here and that you're participating and Again, we'll, we will engage you if you have a prayer request make use of our chat box If you want to make it private you can contact us and and we will be praying for you throughout the week There are a variety of activities to be involved with this week. We had a great week serving our city through the food distribution. We distributed produce on Wednesday and then on Thursday, uh, we gave away potatoes. And we had and more than a thousand people in our community were served those days. And so, by the way, thank you. <laughs> if you were part of the volunteer team and you helped make this happen, it wasn't just the table. We were engaged with three other churches here around town, here in Los Fresnos. Thank you if you were one of those who were participating. If you'd like to volunteer, we're going to do it again. At some point during the month of September, we will be again distributing food and there will be more opportunities to serve our community. But we had a great week, great opportunities, and so glad to be able to serve our city in this way. We've also been serving our city these days and our community through Adopt a Unit. Adopt a Unit was put together by Valley Baptist in Brownsville. And what we've done is we've adopted the medical ICU unit down in Brownsville. And here to talk about this is one of the, one of the persons who's primarily responsible for helping us do this and put this together. We've, we've already made a couple of trips down there to the uh, ICU unit and to those workers there. Here's Sylvia. She's going to talk a little bit about our adopt the unit program. Good morning. The Women's Table Connection want to thank you all for your generous donations for the Adoptee Unit outreach that the Table of Los Fresnos is participating in. To date, we have provided 24 inspirational kits to the nurses and doctors who are working the medical ICU unit at Valley Baptist Medical Center. The kits include personal care items, snacks, cards, and letters of appreciation. It is the goal of the Women's Table Connection to continue providing these inspirational kits every week for the next couple of months. With the generous donations received, we have ample supply of everything needed for the kits, with the exception of cards and notes. If each one of us at the table would be committed to write out some cards and notes of gratitude and encouragement that would be so helpful. Cards and notes can be dropped off at 111 East 7th Street in Los Fresnos or at St. Paul Lutheran Church located at the corner of Morgan Boulevard and Washington Street in Harlingen. Above all, continue praying for the medical staff at Valley Baptist Medical Center in Brownsville. Not only are they working 12-hour shifts, they've seen a lot of death, and they have lost people in their profession in, here in the Valley. But yet, they continue going in and working all their shifts and extending as much care and help as they can. Pray for their health, their families, 
and their family's health, their rests, their skills, their wisdom, and clarity of thought. We are loved by Jesus for the love of our healthcare neighbor. Please join us in paying this forward. Thank you, Sylvia. A couple ways you can engage here at the table with us throughout the week. First of all, we have conversations at the table. And if you want to scroll down through Facebook and our Facebook page here, there are, you know, we've, we've done this uh, dozens of times already uh, since our COVID moment started here in the Valley. And so take advantage of our conversations at the table. If there's something that you would like to see us talk about or discuss in our conversations at the table, then again, leave comments, send us a note and, and, and we'll see. We'll, we'll, try and, we'll try and answer your questions through our conversations at the table. We also have a Bible study on Thursdays. LAMP is our Bible study and we do LAMP at noon on Zoom. And so if you'd like to participate, we always have a good time. This week we'll be in Romans 12 again. Uh, we typically will take a little bit of time to dig a little deeper into the passage that we looked at on Sunday. And today we're looking at Romans 12, 9 through 21. And so that will be our passage this coming Thursday. I encourage you if you have, again, if you have an hour to spare at lunch, join us on Zoom. We will send you the meeting ID and the password if, if you want to join us. We'd love to have you. Whenever we gather together, we gather together as one people, as one family. One of the things that we have been doing uh, through this time is checking in with some of our families who make up our one family here at the table. One of those, one of those persons is Marco, and he is going to tell us a little bit about what he's been doing uh, during our COVID moment here. Marco? Well, thank you, Pastor Chad, for giving me the chance to uh, express a few ideas, thoughts, and experiences um, that throughout this uh, quarantine and pandemic, uh, you know, I guess the common denominator between all of us and all of our stories is uh, uh, stay safe and healthy. Mm, we all want to thrive, you know, in that area. Um, yet, um, it's been on the, on the other hand, you know, it's like a pause. It's been like a pause on, on our lives, on the existence and, and everything, the gift and everything that we do. Um, uh, Lord knows it hasn't been easy, you know, especially when you have to face it, um, alone, when you have to go through this you know, struggle alone. My particular case, you know, it really challenges you, your sanity, your psychological strength, your emotional strength, you know, it's, it's tough. But one thing I should say, and I gotta say it, that in the longest nights and in the darkest hour, I held on to his hand. He was there. My savior, my protector, my Jesus. And when sleep wouldn't come, conversations with him. Conversations with my savior. That has gotten me through. I also have to say thank you, Pastor Chad, because you know, like a good pastor that tends to his flock, You've always been there. At least twice a week. Marco, in which way can I pray for you today? And I always said, my daughters, my two daughters, that relationship which was, you know, just distant and didn't exist. Lord came through. Thank you. All of a sudden, lines of communication opened up and I am able to, uh, to talk to them again. We shared, I share that. Um, other than that, it's just trying to get back to, uh, you know, gotta serve them kiddos. Gotta get back to the school district. You know, 
in whichever way has got to be done. We got to serve that community. Children need to be educated. And with the help of God, we're going to get it done. We got to believe. Anxiety and depression, out. Hold on to the hand of God and talk to Him. Alone we are not. We're His children. And like a good father, He's always there for us. Blessings. I am blessed to be part of the table. At one point, you know, I was, I had nowhere to go. And then I found a table and I found a family. And I thank God for all of you. Blessings. Well, thank you, Marco. So great to hear what God is doing in the lives of our people at the table. So thankful for Marco and the others who are at the table and have, have been here with us since we first launched back in September. You know, every single one of us, all part of this body that Paul talks about in Romans 12, we all bring something different to the table, <laughs> literally. Uh, we, are, we all have gifts. If, if you're part of the table, you're part of the table's family, then God has gifted you something and it's for the benefit, not just for yourself or for your family, but for the table family. And so, so thankful for Marco and so thankful for others who are participating with us here at the table. When we gather, we gather as one, one body, one olive tree that we've been talking about throughout the book of Romans. And we gather in the name of Jesus. We gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because we are here to celebrate Jesus and his life, his death, his resurrection, what he has done for us in bringing us together as a people. When we gather together, we also want to sing. This is an opportunity for you to sing. Yes, sing. <laughs> Wherever you happen to be with our worship team, here is our worship team, Hoel, Frankie, and Will with our God.
Thanks, worship team. Our God is greater. And so when we get together, we want to talk about God's greatness, and we do that in song. We do that in Scripture. God declares to us how great He is and what He has done for us in Jesus. So this morning, we are going to hear uh, again from uh, some of our family members here at the table as they read for us of portions of Scripture. And this morning, we're going to be hearing from Ava, and she's reading Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 34 through 43. Ava? Deuteronomy 32, 34 through 43. Is it not stored up with me, sealed up in my vaults? Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay. In time, their foot will slip, for their day of disaster is near, and their doom is coming quickly. The Lord will indeed vindicate his people and have compassion on his servants. When he sees that their strength is gone and no one is left, slave or free, he will say, where are their gods, the rock they found refuge in, who ate the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them rise up and help you. Let it be a shelter for you. See now that I alone am he. There is no God but me. I bring death and I give life. I wound and I heal. No one can rescue anyone from my power. I raise my hand to heaven and declare, surely as I live forever, when I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand takes hold of judgment, I will take vengeance on my adversaries and repay those who hate me. I will make my arrow drunk with blood while my sword devours flesh, the blood of the slain and the captives and the heads of the enemy leaders. Rejoice you nations concerning his people for he will avenge the blood of his servants. He will take vengeance on his adversaries. He will purify the land and his people. Our gospel reading this morning comes from John chapter 13. John chapter 13 is part of Jesus' last words to his disciples the night that he was betrayed, arrested, and then crucified. And these are his words to his disciples, his followers, his best friends. And he's letting them know, hey, as, as this is about to happen, here's what I want you to remember. Here's what I want you to do. And so to help us with this is Nellie. She's going to read for us from John chapter 13. Nellie. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Thank you, Nellie. One of the things that we do when we gather together, we gather together to celebrate Jesus and what he has done for us in his life, his death, and his resurrection, the salvation that he has provided for us. But we also gather as sinners, sinners in need of that salvation, sinners in need of forgiveness, in need of the grace that Jesus provides in the forgiveness. And so when we gather together, we confess our sins together. And again, I invite you to this morning, we are going to use the personalized version of our confession this morning. The words are on your screen. And I invite you uh, to participate with us. Again, this is the personalized version. And so as you see room for, as you'll, you'll see this on the screen, by the way, as we ask these questions, I invite you to respond with yes, because yes is the appropriate answer as we confess our sins together this way. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Do you confess that we are by nature 
sinful and unclean, say yes. Do you confess that we have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed? Say yes. Do you confess that we have sinned against God by what we have done and by what we have left undone? Say yes. Do you confess that we have not loved God with our whole heart and that we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves? Say yes. Do you confess that because of God's justice, we are deserving of His present and eternal punishment? Say yes. Do you ask of God for the sake of His Son to have mercy on us, to forgive us, to renew us, and to lead us, so that we may delight in what He wants us to believe and do? Say yes. God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As one who is a servant of Christ and His gospel and by His authority, I gladly announce all your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now here is a song from Hoel.
Thank you, Howell. One of the things that we do when we gather together, even if when we're gathering online, is we like to pray. And so I invite you, as you are watching, to spend some time in prayer with me. We're going to be praying especially for our healthcare workers who are risking their health, risking their lives down at Valley Baptist in the medical ICU unit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do pray for those who are in the medical ICU unit at Valley Baptist, those uh, that we have come to know as friends, we pray that you will be near them in this time. Thank you so much for all they mean to us and all they mean to those people, our, our, those members of our community that are there in the ICU. I pray that you will continue to be near them, guide them, direct them. I know they have a lot of anxiety and they've even experienced grief in just the past week. I pray that you will comfort them in their grief. I pray that you will calm them in their anxiety, provide them with the wisdom and the skill as they work with the patients. I pray for the doctors as well that are part of this unit. Give them the wisdom, give them the skill Give them the patience, give them the courage as they work through difficult times with these patients. I, pr I pray that you will grace them with the patience necessary, uh, patience that seems fleeting at times because of the stress they are under there in the ICU unit. I pray that you will heal them. I pray that you will give them strength, give them stamina, and give them endurance. Keep them safe continue to bring them home to their families healthy. I pray for their families. I pray that you will give them patience and give them endurance and courage even in this time as they have loved ones who are working on the front lines. I pray that you will be with those who are sick in the ICU, those that our healthcare workers are attending. Heal them, bring them back to our community. I pray for our families here in Los Fresnos who are going through grief right now because they've lost a loved one to COVID again, even in the past week. Be near them. Things are difficult. Our grief is not normal, at least in the sense uh, as, as we are used to normally grieving. We grieve from a distance these days. I pray that people will reach out to these, these members of our community and that they will feel the love of Jesus right now uh, through those that you provide. Again, be near them. Let them know that you are with them even in their grief. I pray now for opportunities again at the table for us to serve our community. I pray that you'll give us grace, uh, give us words of grace as we engage one another in these difficult moments, not just with COVID-19, but everything happening right now in our society. Give us grace. May we be agents of peace for Los Fresnos. In your name I pray. Amen. Here is our worship team with another song. <music> Thank you. 
Thank you, Howell, Frankie, Will. Now we are going to hear from Mike Galvan. He has our scripture passage that we're looking at this morning. This morning we are in Romans chapter 9, and we are in verses 9 through 21 in the book of Romans. Here Paul is unpacking for us what life in the Spirit looks like in the book of Romans for those people living in Rome, to the, the, the ones, the church that he's writing his letter to. So here's Mike with Romans 12, 9 through 21. Hi there, good morning. Uh, this is Mike, and uh, today I'm going to be uh, bringing you a reading from uh, the book of Romans. Uh, it's Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21, and it is titled Christian Ethics. Let love be without hypocrisy, detest evil, cling to what is good, love one another deeply as brothers and sisters, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lack diligence in zeal, in fervent, be fervent in the spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in affliction, be persistent in prayer, share with the saints in their needs, Pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. <clears throat> Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge, friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath because it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for in doing so you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be quivered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Uh, obviously not an easy task, but... Sorry about that. Uh, like I was saying, obviously not an easy task, okay, but it is something that can be done, and even more so with God on your side, okay? Uh, it's always good to pray, you know, pray for help, pray for one's betterment, um, you know, and, and He will help you through. He will help you achieve these goals, because we're not perfect, we're nowhere near as perfect as He is, but with Him, we can strive and we can achieve perfection in his time. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mike. Ever go to the store for a particular item and you get to the store, you fill your cart, you fill your cart, you, you go to the checkout line, you put the, everything in your cart into the car, you drive home, unload the car, uh, get everything where it's supposed to go uh, at your house, and then realize that the one thing that you went to the store for you don't have, you forgot. <laughs> I've done that more than a few times. And uh, it's always kind of comical when that happens. That happens because we get distracted by all the other stuff that we are putting into our carts. We get to the store and all of, you know, we get to Walmart here in town and all of a sudden we're saying, oh, hey, I need this, this, and this pretty soon. We have a full cart, <laughs> but the item that we went to the store for doesn't make it back to the house. This morning, we're continuing to tell our story here in the book of Romans. The book of Romans here in the New Testament is a letter that the great missionary Paul writes to a church that is gathering and meeting in Rome in the early first century. And he has spent 
a lot of the book unpacking for them what it means for them to be connected to Jesus, what it means for them to be made right with God through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. And he also then begins to uh, talk to this church about themselves. You see, they are meeting as a congregation uh, of multiple ethnicities, and Jews and Gentiles, two people groups, probably more than two people groups, but at least two people groups, people that are not like each other. And they're having, apparently, some difficulties. And some of it is, what place uh, do Gentiles now have in God's salvation plan? And that's why he's unpacking for them what Jesus has done. And for the Gentiles who want to know, what are the Jews still doing, you know, worshiping with us? We're all gathered together. They were all gathered together in the same gathering. Imagine that. A multi-ethnic congregation. And Paul's writing to them. He's telling them their story, their story in the gospel. And that's what we have been doing uh, throughout the past few weeks. Paul tells them that they are one body. He tells them they are all Abraham's offspring, Jew and Gentile together. He says they're all one olive tree. They've all been grafted together. They're all being grown together, Jew and Gentile alike, in the gospel. They have one salvation in Jesus, salvation that he has provided in his life, death, and resurrection. They are all participants in the gospel. They have been given forgiveness, and life in Jesus. And along the way, the mercy that they have been given, they are now to show mercy to others. They are to pay mercy forward. Yet like the trip to the grocery store, it seems Paul, as Paul's talking about all of this, whether it happens to be this one grand plan of salvation that's, that has uh, brought these people together in Jesus, or whether it's paying forward the mercy, there seems to be one particular element that is missing. And a lot of times it, it becomes missing for us. And I say that because we can come into this next section here, this, uh, what, what Mike just read for us, we can come to this section and begin to get distracted. We can start to unpack all the things that are happening in this section and miss the one thing that we came into this section four. Paul has quite a long list here for his gathering of believers. It's a quite a long list of things that they're to be working on. In fact, it can begin to feel quite exhaustive. We could become exhausted just reading all of this command after command after command. These are all good things, good things, yet stuff that the church body is supposed to be working on. In all, depending on how you're counting, 28, 29, 30 commands, here, the biggest list in any of Paul's writings. So he, he has things like, uh, detest evil, cling to what is good. Okay, easier said than done, but okay, we get that, of course. Take the lead in honoring one another. Okay, we guess we need to be working on that. Yes, we can do that. Don't lack diligence in your zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Rejoice. Get to work on your patience. And by the way, don't forget prayer. Share your stuff with others. Be good hosts. Rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Weep with those who are weeping. Bless your enemies. Okay, that's a tough one, but, you know, Jesus said kind of the same thing. We'll work on that. But all of it together, all 29, 30 <laughs> of these commands together, 29 principles for Christian living. I mean, this is so exhaustive, it's time to start together, put together some classes. Maybe we need to have a sermon series on all 29. Maybe we should have a series of seminars and workshops. These, these ethics seem daunting. Who can live up to all of this? Yet this is what the community is called to be and do. 29 principles, good principles, good Christian principles to live by in a very short space here in this letter. Now when you see something like that in one of Paul's letters, you begin to think, and this is a good thing to begin to think, you begin to realize that he's doing this because whatever's in this list is in short supply to those people that he's writing. And remember, remember, he's writing to a multi-ethnic congregation, Jews and Gentiles, who are still trying to learn 
to live together in harmony. And so the friction between Jews and Gentiles is what Paul seems to be addressing here. And so we have in this community, apparently, people who think more highly of themselves than they ought to think, people who apparently aren't very hospitable. And again, you can go through this list, people that don't honor one another. You can go through this list and begin to see, kind of have a painted picture of what life is like in this gathering in Rome in the first century. These people are having a hard time putting the other guy first. And it's not hard to see that this is what Paul is really after. He uses one another multiple times, you know, <laughs> love one another, honor one another, live in harmony with one another. So there are some one anothering things that Paul wants this gathering to be working on. So we read this list and we recognize, well, this is stuff that we probably ought to be working on as well. And it happens very easy and, quite frankly, all too often we come to this list and we start designing those classes. We start looking for workshops and seminars on how we're going to just, you know, what this is supposed to look like for us. And we could do this here at the table. You know, how is this, how is this all supposed to function for us here in Los Fresnos as a table, as, as a new church plant here, a new community here in this community? Uh, we could do that you know, going point by point and drawing up a list of Christian ethics that are going to help us navigate life in Los Fresnos. And again, these are all characteristics, again, the way Paul's writing, these are all characteristics of those who have uh, come to faith in Christ, those who've been given faith in Christ, those who've been brought into this one olive tree. This is what this one olive tree is supposed to be doing as a body and so as we come to this and we start reading this you know it's very easy for us to come and hop skip and jump right into this list and i look at this list and i see a couple of them i'm thinking oh boy hey <laughs> there's a couple of there's a couple here that, that our community in fact our society could be working on right now so let's go look at these things <laughs> but there's one principle here there's one command here that tops the list. It's the summary statement. It's the thesis statement. It's what really Paul is after. And yes, he's got these, uh, these other principles, these other good ethics to live by. But really, it's the one. And if you get the one, you're going to start to be able to understand how the rest, how, how, what the rest is supposed to look like for you. And the very first principle is the very first principle of the paragraph. It is his thesis statement, his summary statement, his title for this section. Let love be without hypocrisy. You miss this, you might as well not bother with the rest of the list. You miss this and you miss the point. This is Paul's neon sign for this section. This is his thesis. This is his summary. This is his goal. This is where he's headed. Everything that follows in this section is going to tie back to this statement, let love be without hypocrisy. In fact, it's very easy to see. I mean, very shortly, Paul's going to restate the one command that Jesus gave his followers on the night he was arrested. He says, I've got a commandment for you, just one. Love one another. And so that leads to honoring one another. It leads to sharing with the saints. If you're doing, you know, if, you, if your love is going to be without hypocrisy, then you're going to be rejoicing with those who rejoice. You weep with those who weep. You're going to live in harmony with one another. You just go right through this list. It's all flowing out of this very first statement. And then it all ties back to other things that Paul has said coming into this section. So, you want to know what the will of God is for this one olive tree, the will of God by the renewing of your mind? You want to know what that one will of God is for this body as they work on their gifts together that they have been given in their salvation? Let love be without hypocrisy. That's the will of God for this congregation. You want to know what re renewing your mind looks like? Renewing your mind through the gospel, no less. The outflow of renewing the mind is our lives that look like this. Love without hypocrisy. You see, you get this right, 
You get all of chapter 12 right. The whole thing comes together. Even being a living sacrifice, what does it look like to be a living sacrifice? This list, oh sure, but you better have the first one because the first one colors the rest. Let love be without hypocrisy. And you get that, and you're well on your way to understanding and being what a living sacrifice is in the one body. Christian ethics must be summed up by and characterized by love that flows out of the gospel. You know, love and these ethics, this whole section, begins and ends at the cross. Otherwise, none of it's Christian. It all starts with what Jesus has done for us in his life and in his death, the mercy that he has given us, the forgiveness that he has given us, the grace, all of it summed up, all of that summed up as love. And like everything else in Paul's letter, that rhythm that we've been talking about, paying it forward, again, the mercy that we've been given, we now pay forward in mercy to others. Same thing here. The love that we have been shown in the cross, the love that Jesus has for us, that love that will never let us go, according to Romans 8. That's the love that we now pay forward as we do all these principles that we've read about here in this section of this chapter paying forward the love that we have been given to others. It is a pay-forward love. Now, we begin to look at love through this lens, through the lens of the gospel, and even through the lens of this list. This list is nothing like the love that we have been taught by Hollywood and even Hallmark. <laughs> right? Hollywood spends and then uh, makes, spends and makes, billions on defining love for our society. Yeah. I mean, and Hallmark does this for us on the small screen. I, I think, think, you know, what's your favorite, you know, what's your favorite romance? Uh, what, what is, what's your go-to chick flick? <laughs> you know, call me cheesy. I like Family Man and Nicolas Cage. And it's a, it's a variant on Dickens' Christmas Carol. Uh, the theme of that one, by the way, is love is a choice. I choose you. But we could identify all sorts of other uh, movies and Hallmark movies at Christmas time, all of them with a love that seemingly is first. It, it tends to be selfless. They will have a bit of selflessness in there. They don't want that to go missing. But what drives most of it, first of all, is, is emotion. The second thing is sexuality. And so you have this kind of emotive, you know, it's, it's the goosebumps that you feel when he or she walks by. That's kind of the beginning. And then the third thing is compatibility. And oh, by, you know, <laughs> we start talking about compatibility, we ta start talking about things like eHarmony that now make millions, uh, matching people together based on compatibility. This is what our society tells us is kind of the nuts and bolts of love. Love is a feeling, love is sex, love is compatibility. So Hollywood and Hallmark are defining for us what love is, and again, not to say that none of those things don't have anything don't, to, to do with love. Don't, don't hear me wrong. But this list is showing us something almost completely different. This list is suggesting something else. You see, this list is, again, remember, two people groups, two people groups that seemingly have a little bit of friction, a multi-ethnic congregation, a multi-ethnic community, made up of Jew and Gentile who historically don't get along, they are being encouraged by Paul, being told by Paul, to let their love be without hypocrisy. Let love drive everything that they do for each other and for the world. Again, they're to allow the grace that Jesus has given them to grace the others. So, love then is the driving force for a multi-ethnic congregation who are, who are reading things like this. Take the lead in honoring one another. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. 
Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. That's love. That's love. That's the kind of love that, that flows out of this one olive tree that Christ has put together in giving all of them forgiveness and salvation. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. That's love. Love for those who are unlovely. Love for those who aren't like us. Those who love for those who are trying to do us wrong. The, the, the world is not going to paint that kind of picture for us in love. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Again, all of this is love. And now you begin to see what it looks like Remember the question that begins at the very beginning of this chapter, what does it mean to be a living sacrifice? Well, here it is. It's this kind of selfless love for the good of each other, laying down my own wants, my own needs, my own agenda for the other guy. Let love be without hypocrisy. Paul's thesis statement, Paul's summary of how the community is to be with each other and then how the community is to be for the world. But that's not all he's saying here. Note the kind of love. Again, look at the summary statement and listen. Let love be without hypocrisy. First of all, if you're honest, that's a tall order. <laughs> uh, we're all, again, because we're sinners, all of us at, at some point in some way, uh, have a little bit of hy hypocrisy or a lot of hypocrisy in us. But this list is what love looks like, and this list is what love does. And in a sense, uh, Paul is here is, is adding a caveat now. It's not just love, it is authentic love. This is what genuine love looks like. People who've experienced salvation, people who've come from all different walks of life and have been placed into this multi-ethnic community are now to allow their love to be authentic. You know, it's, it's the kind of love, we've talked about it here, it's the kind of love that is without reciprocity. It's not looking for something in return. It's love that is, well, just because, just because. This is what we do. <laughs> uh, I, uh, we were passing out water last year at one of the football games and, and handing the water to, again, one of, one of our neighbors here. The lady looks at me and she says, why are you doing this? And I looked at her and I said, just because. <laughs> just because. Just because this is what love does. There, there's really, there's no, nothing expected in return. People are used to that. People are expecting that. People, they have not felt, they, ha, they don't even know, they don't even understand a lot of the times authentic love, especially coming from the church. You know, a, a lot of the love that they see or so-called love uh, is coming from those who are expecting some sort of reciprocity. And again, a lot of that love sometimes feels fake. And, you know, that can even creep into what we're doing. You know, the, the, the giveaways, the food giveaways that we're doing and the, the stuff that we're doing for the healthcare workers. That can seem fake and come across as fake. Love can be fake. Now, I'm not even, I'm not talking about those TV preachers and the evangelists and others that we see who are totally fake. I'm talking about stuff that we do that can come across it. You know, those people, they do give love a bad name, <laughs> to quote a 1980s philosopher from New Jersey. But that's not what we're talking about here. Our love needs to be authentic. A lot of times it isn't. Authentic love has no reciprocity. It's not expecting something in return, and it doesn't wrap itself in pretty bows and ribbons. Authentic love flows out of broken vessels. People who are sinners. Authentic love is sinners loving sinners in the midst of the mess and not wrapping it all up in all sorts of virtue and moral righteousness. No, it's meeting people where they're at, 
And being transparent, being authentic, this world is looking for authenticity, and authenticity flows out of broken vessels. And authentic love, when it comes from those who have been uh, shown mercy and grace, is always, always, always aiming at the best interests of the other guy with no reservations. We hear a lot about unconditional love, and you may pick up some of that here. I like authentic simply because, again, unconditional love, the way it is described and defined out there, a lot of times uh, isn't what we're talking about here. What we are, we are talking about is love without strings. Love without strings, not expecting anything in return. And we know that this is the kind of love that is interested in the other person's best interest just because, because Paul ends this entire list. Now, I don't think this is an accident. He ends his entire list talking about peace. And he's not simply, he is talking about harmony with one another uh, within the community, with, between these Jews and Gentiles, but then he's pointing them outward. You see, it's not just for us. It's for the world. It's for our neighbors. Jews do not worship with Gentiles. The world sees that and they begin to think, what? Are you kidding me? That is upside down. But this is what salvation does. And so here's how Paul describes what the love that has been experienced by these Jews and these Gentiles, this multi-ethnic community. Here is what he says then spills out into the community. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Everyone. Let that sink in. Everyone means people who are not like me. Everyone means people who are on the opposite side of the political aisle. Everyone means the person who I typically would not hang out with. Everyone. Now, he's writing into a congregation in a context in which they were told they had peace. Now, some, thing, some of the things that we're picking up in this book doesn't appear that they are experiencing all the peace that Rome had to offer. <laughs> Sounds like there's a bit of persecution involved. But Rome offered peace to the world. There was a monument in Rome, not far from where this gathering is gathering, this community gathers. There was a monument called the Altar of Peace in Rome. It was a special kind of monument that had been built on the field of Mars. It happened that it used to be, at one time, a military training facility, and they changed that around, and they built a monument. It was, it was a monument dedicated to peace that had been won through military might. This peace uh, altar was built about 13 years before Jesus showed up, and Nero eventually had this monument put or on the coins, stamped onto their coins. So it was a big deal. Rome offered peace. And if you look at what's at the altar of peace, you see various figures, political figures, military figures, and especially Caesar. And it's all about peace being provided through military might. See, Rome offered peace through power, through glory, through the sword. For all nations, by the way, all nations were represented at that altar of peace, offering to all nations, as long as you bowed your knee to the sword, you had peace. Now, our world knows anything but peace right now. All you have to do is get on the internet or turn on your televisions, and you know violence fills our screens, the angry voices fill our speakers, COVID-19 is destabilizing the earth beneath us, and our, you know, it's threatening our health and our financial security. There is anything but peace right now in this world. And there are those who are offering peace on both sides of the political aisle. And this peace that's being offered is through either protest or power at the point of a gun. Order is what we say it is. But peace. 
Everybody wants peace. Everybody wants peace their way, but everybody's offering peace. Life is very noisy right now, and the odd thing is there is no peace. Authentic love offers a different kind of peace. Selflessness. A willingness to be disadvantaged. That is authentic love that comes through peace. You see, authentic love starts at the cross. Authentic love. The kind of authentic love that brings about peace. Real, genuine peace starts at the cross. It is through suffering. It is through humiliation. It is through selflessness. It is through blood. It is through sacrifice. That is authentic love. Willingness to be put at a disadvantage for the other guy. For peace. And it brings peace to those who embrace that kind of of authentic love. We're not used to thinking of love in terms of suffering, humiliation, blood, sacrifice, selflessness, a willingness to be disadvantaged. No, we're used to love that comes other, by other means, but this is the love that, that Christ is talking about. This is the love that Christ showed and did. This is the love that Paul is talking about here in Romans 12. And so, because we have been given peace at the cross, we seek peace for our neighbors, paying it forward. The peace that we've been given, we now pay forward to our neighbors, even here in Los Fresnos. And so that means right now that the table, you look at Romans 12, our passage today, Romans 12, 9 through 21. And what this passage is calling us to do is to have authentic love. Let love be without hypocrisy for the good of our neighbors, for the good of each other, and for the good of our neighbors, so that we have peace. That means the table is an agent of peace. That means the, the members of the table are agents of peace for those, for, for, for whoever you're in contact with, wherever we are at any given moment, we are an agent of peace. We need to embrace that. That's the kind of love that the world, first of all, doesn't experience, cannot offer. We have it here because this is what's been done for us in Jesus. We're doing a few things for our community in a few small ways. We've talked about them here this morning, the food distributions and, and serving our healthcare workers. And that, that's simply the beginning. It's simply a start. You know, what this should lead us to here for the table is being participants in our community in which we're listening, in which we're sitting down in the midst of the mess and experiencing life which is with each other and experiencing life with our neighbors with authenticity and genuineness in our love. You see, we have, we talk about this all the time, we've been loved by Jesus. Here's how we think about it today through the lens of Paul and Romans. We have been authentically loved by Jesus for the authentic love and peace of Los Fresnos. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for all you have done for us and the fact that you, you did for us what we could not do, and that is make, thing, make things right by living, dying, and rising for us. Thank you for giving us of your love your authentic love. Now, even this week, make us agents of that love. Make us agents of peace right here in our own community. In your name I pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you, even this week, may he give you his peace. I hope you enjoy your Sunday. Again, participate with us here at the table as, as much as you can. And, uh, and we'll see you next time, next week. We'll be right here on Facebook. Again, contact us if there's anything that you need. Remember, we are authentically loved by Jesus for the authentic love and peace of those presidents.